everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I'm George Crows, and I am thrilled to have my friend here today, uh, Megan Lawson. I've known Megan uh, personally for a few years, and we have so many great conversations on education, and I've seen her do so many great things in her work. She's had uh, several different roles. And I'm really excited to talk about education today with Megan and, and, and some of the stuff that she does. And I'm going to share a couple quotes uh, in a second uh, of things that have really resonated with me. And we'll share links so you can connect with Megan on her, on her blog, uh, on her Twitter account. But Megan, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to, to actually have a conversation today. Can you just share a little bit about who you are and just some of the work that you've done in education? Sure. Well, I'm just honored that you would have me. Thanks for having me. So uh, I am currently working for the Hamilton County, County Educational Service Center, which is in the Cincinnati area. Um, people who are familiar with educational service centers, we do lots of different things in the field of education, but my path that led me there, you know, I was a um, seventh grade English teacher. I've taught high school English. I taught for about eight years um, before wanting to uh, expand my impact outside of the classroom. And I remember having a principal at the time who said, you know, you should really think about getting your uh, administrator's license. And I remember thinking at the time, like, why would anyone want to do your job? Your job looks terrible. And uh, she, she said, you know, urged me to really um, challenge myself in that way um, outside the, those four walls of my, my classroom. And so I'm so glad I did. Um, I've learned a lot. Uh, I was an assistant principal in a middle school for a couple of years. I got to work in a central office um, role as a secondary um, director of curriculum for about four years. Um, so I've gotten to uh, just do all kinds of, of neat things. But the thing that's been fun about the Educational Service Center experience is that, um, you know, we dabble uh, in all kinds of different supports. And last year I got to be an interim principal in an elementary school um, and really um, experienced the elementary world for the first time and just was blown away by the amazing work that uh, elementary teachers uh, do with kids and just looking at kindergartners and seeing how much that they, you know, grew from the beginning of the year to the end. So, um, yeah, that's just a little bit about me. I'm just currently supporting districts in a lot of different ways and enjoying developing some PD for teachers right now. Yeah. And I think for me, and I'm sure a lot of people and I have conversations about this all the time. Um, cause I know you work with a lot of adults, do a lot of professional learning with adults and like being honest, we all know this in education, like teachers are probably, one of the hardest groups to teach, right? And I don't know why that is. I think part of it is that they have extremely high standards of what they expect because they, they do that job, right? And maybe hard to keep their attention, uh, probably plus just the overwhelming nature of the job. But like, what are some of the, you know, kind of through your work, what are some of the opportunities that you've seen, especially, you know, in the last few months with like COVID, people going to virtual learning? What, like, what are some of the things that you've been doing with educators to kind of support them like through professional learning uh, to kind of help them during this time? Hmm, that's a great question. Well, I've really enjoyed, um, you know, the Cincinnati area has school districts that span um, quite a distance from each other. And so sometimes it's hard for us to work with certain school districts because they're just quite far away. So what's been great about um, this year is that a lot of our PD has been virtual and I've been amazed at what can be accomplished, um, you know, through Zoom sessions, um, asynchronous, right? Like I know we keep throwing out those buzzwords, but it's been pretty cool to think about ways that we can engage and interact um, with people, not even necessarily always in real time, um, you know, with video messaging. Uh, so I've, I've enjoyed that, um, but I've also just tried to be um, really intentional about modeling um, vulnerability and, and asking for feedback and admitting when I don't know things and talking about when things are hard um, because things are hard right now. And I think October especially is a difficult month. You know, people have been in the grind for a while now. And um, this is usually the time in a typical school year where people get tired. Um, it's harder for them to take care of themselves. It's harder for them to take care of others. So I've just been looking also for ways to be mindful of that and cognizant of that when you work with teachers, like just like we with students, like we have to meet people where they are um, and read the room, whether it's virtual or in person. And so I'm just really trying to be thoughtful about letting people know how I'm doing, asking how they're doing and asking for feedback about whether or not I'm actually meeting their needs and responding accordingly. And I think that for me, like this is one of the things I've been really drawn to in the work that you're doing 
in really kind of that human connection. Like you talk a lot about courage, why that's important. Uh, you talk a lot about vulnerability. And, you know, as you're talking and listening, I actually just received an email today. It was really fascinating. I actually suggested uh, in a blog post um, that school districts look at, you know, on professional learning days that they give people the opportunity to do some, like some self-paced stuff. Like we don't need to always bring people together. We don't need to like pack the day with learning, right? I think people are overwhelmed. And um, there, is, there is a picture I saw on a site called Imgur and it was really interesting and I cannot find it for the life of me, but the message really resonated. It was like a quote card and it basically said like, we spend a, a ton of time providing like mental health support and creating mental health initiatives, but then don't look at the things that are causing the mental health issues in our system, right? In the first place. So it's like, hey, we're gonna like work you to death, but then we're gonna have like yoga. So that should fix everything, right? Like it's kind of that type of mentality. And so the email that I got, I, I shared like, hey, think about like maybe just saying, hey, here's something I need you to do. Just you have this time, figure it out on your own time, do it when a time for works for you. And so a superintendent contacted me this morning and she said, just like the feeling of just be people being grateful to like figure out and say like, Hey, you have until here's like an hour to watch. We'll talk about it, whatever, but I'll take Thursday and Friday for yourself and figure out when to do it. And she did this as a superintendent. And it's like, it, there's accountability to the learning. Like it's people think that, you know, people aren't going to do it, but they, they have to like, you know, input some information, you know, there's going to be evidence that they watched it. And I think that human connection that you talk about is really kind of understanding and stepping back as it, like, no one's going to learn effectively if we don't value them as people. Right. And I think that's something that's really powerful. And this is actually one of the reasons I really wanted to have a conversation with you today is you and I, as I was writing Innovate Inside the Box, we are having a text conversation and you kind of like push back on something I said or like rewording it and you went through it and you text me and you said, Hey, you know, I wouldn't say this. I would say this. And this is, this is actually the quote that you text me. You said, uh, we don't have to be perfect to make a difference. We need to care deeply about our impact on kids, care deeply about our words, and we need to embrace our humanness. And I actually said, well, I'm not going to put that in my book as mine because you just said it so they just quoted you so i don't know i don't know how you like reference a text <laughs> in a book but you said it so um like when you talk about that humanness and when you talk about that impact like can you kind of dig deeper into that quote like what does that look like in a school what does that look like with our colleagues what does that mean uh well before we talk about that i just want to say like i can feel myself sitting taller in this chair like thinking about the fact that i got to be quoted in your book and i think there's a lesson there for all of us um i think you do such a nice job of modeling um how important how many great voices there are out in the field and um curating those voices so that we can all learn from each other people who are actually in the work doing the work and so um i just wanted to thank you that i mean um that just made a world of difference for me and i want to be more that way for other people empowering their voices. Um, I don't, our humanity, like I give, I'm still blown away by the question. Like I'm still like, yeah, that was so cool. Like I quoted in your book. Yeah. What was the question? Well, you talked about, you talked about like that, that thinking about our impact. You talked about like that humanness. And I think especially this is something I really gravitate toward because we do a lot of work in these digital spaces. Right. And I think sometimes we lose that there is a person on the other side of the screen right? Like, I think one of the big turnarounds for a lot of people is I've always seen, or I shouldn't say I've always seen my focus for maybe the last 10 years is how do we use technology to build relationships? But a lot of people have seen as technology is doing the opposite, right? Like we become more disconnected. We do this and I, and I can see how that is relevant, but you know, seeing kids on zoom, uh, you know, is like, reminds me of FaceTiming my dad, right? Thing, and when I didn't have that opportunity, when I, like, when I first started university in 1999, I would have killed for FaceTime, right? I was all by myself. Like when I started education, I was in the middle of nowhere and to be able to see my family. And that's like, I started realizing like how important these things are. And so like that humanness that you talk about, like, what do you mean by that? Like, what does that look like in education? My 
first thought is just about um, people uh, like being authentic and feeling comfortable enough to um, just share of themselves with others in ways that feel very natural to who they really are. I think um, sometimes the workplace can feel a bit stuffy and I'm, I'm, I'm all for professionalism. You know, I like to show up as my best self. I want people to, you know, find me to be a professional, but I also want people to feel um, like relate, like they can relate uh, with one another and connect with one another. And like, I just feel um, that sometimes we don't, okay, here's a, here's an example. Like I, I just feel like artificial harmony is something that um, can happen very easily in education spaces, right? Because we really want people to feel feel good and we want it to feel positive. Um, I feel like there's a way to still have positivity, um, but also share in ways that are really meaningful and talk about things that are hard or let people know how you're doing. Like you don't have to wallow in it, but like also just um, being thoughtful about the words that we use. Like I feel like there's so many um, even buzzwords in our field that we throw around as educators. And I don't even know if we're having the same conversation, like, you know, differentiation, tier one, tier two, tier three, systems. I mean, like I, I could get list off the edu jargon that is everywhere. Um, and I just am looking for more meaningful ways to connect with other people who care about kids and doing good work for kids. Um, and I just wonder sometimes, like, are we losing parents? Are we losing teachers? Are we losing people because we we're talking, but are we really having a conversation that A matters? Or are we talking about the same thing in the same space? So um, that doesn't really connect, I guess, with what you're talking about with tech. Um, but, you know, I also find I'm more relaxed if I'm at home and my three-legged cat wants to jump in my lap. Like, I mean, you can, it's hard not to smile if you see somebody's dog. I mean, like my dream Zoom would be like a class full of cats. Everybody lifts their cats <laughs> into the air. Like I would be so pumped to see everybody's right. cat or dog. So, um, and I also know the flip side is there's people who are struggling because they don't feel comfortable having people see um, them in that environment and, and for a variety of reasons. So I guess I'm just looking to get to know people more and what they're mm -hmm. comfortable with and meeting them where they are. And I just hope that that is happening. I think it is all over. Yeah. All over like even, even with, um, even with like the little background that you see, if you're watching this on YouTube, you see my REM, you might see behind my kids, like sculptures, my signed photograph of Justin Timberlake, which I absolutely love. And it's funny because like I do a lot of like virtual keynotes and things like that. And I have those images up and like I have, I don't know if you can see it because the light kind of messes it up on my screen, but I got like La La Land, uh, the album, which is like, I love Ryan Gosling. He's one of my favorites. But that every time I do this, people will point out albums that they see and they'll talk about them or things like this, right? And so part of it is like, I don't want to put like my grad, like my diploma or, you know, my master's degree, like those, you know, that's part of my work. And I understand why people have that, but I like people seeing the little human connection stuff. Right. And I think that is, you know, talk about that people like I'll, they'll have their kids running around and or you know their dog barking and they'll be like oh and i'm like oh god this is like why we're here like i love this stuff right like i love seeing the stuff about you um i i just want to bring up something that you said and I, I really appreciate um your kind words but i think it's something that is important to me uh i try to over reference as opposed to under reference right so like even that quote that I shared about the mental health thing, I can't remember who it is, but I just want to make sure even when I'm explaining it, it's not mine. I don't want to take, I don't want credit for something, even though I can't remember the exact uh, site. But on the, on the flip side, I've been really frustrated. I write a ton. Uh, I've had people like plagiarize my work, share stuff. And it's frustrating, right? Like you, you put all this in and you're just like, well, why can't I get credit for this? And I think some people are, and this kind of ties into human connection, they're more worried about like they're, they don't look smart because it's not their idea. Whereas I've always said, the, the more I share other people's ideas, the, like the more well-read I look, right? Like the more people I'm looking at different perspectives, different ideas, no one's ever like, you know, that was really great, but he like referenced so many educators that sucked. Like nobody's gonna fall. And I just, I think that to me, and, you know, like just watching your face and as you're sharing that to, to like 
highlight other people in my book that are doing great work or have great ideas, it's, there's, no, there's no negative on me. And I think people have to understand that. I think this comes back to like that kind of humility and vulnerability that you talk about is that, yeah, I want to highlight those people because I don't think it makes anything look bad what I do. Um, I, one of the things though that I pushed you to, and when you blow up as a big author, I'm gonna take all the credit for this, <laughs> is I, I push you to blog. And, and then I, and then I said, you need to start this, you need to do this. Then you started it and never told me. So then you're like, yeah, I got this website. I'm like, oh, like, why didn't you say anything? Cause I just thought you just like, ah, uh, you know, grumpy old George is saying dumb stuff. And so I've been, I've been kind of digging in your blog and reading it. And for me, like for people that ever want to write a book, like that's how I started, right. Is right. And we, you and I have talked about you writing a book in the future and I'm excited about that. And there is a ton of of quotes that resonate, ton of articles. And I, I just love kind of, um, when I'm reading your blog, it's like this intersection of like human stories, education. It's not like education, 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 right? And I feel that's what keeps people connected. And uh, it's from a blog that you wrote called Lost in the Moment. And like, see, I do my research before I do these things. <laughs> So lost in the moment, and you wrote this. What if administrators stopped to notice when students were experiencing pure joy in a teacher's classroom and took 30 seconds to give that positive, specific feedback to the teacher? If our feedback is only about standards or data, or data, I don't know how you say it in the US, we send the message that this is all we care about. Let's start valuing those magical little moments that educators create for students. That's what keeps kids coming back with open minds and hearts every day. Can you just kind of talk us through that quote. I, like, I loved it. I think it's really, really powerful. There's a, I have a ton of thoughts on it, but like, tell me like why you wrote that, some of the things, things behind it. Okay, I will, but now I also have something that I wanted to, that I'm thinking about. Um, yep. Just the fact that you have encouraged me to blog um, and really you've never given me professional advice that didn't turn out to be great. <laughs> and that's been one thing uh, that's been really great for me. Um, and here's why. Um, I've always loved to read. I've always loved to consume. Um, but the problem is, I think for a long time, I've cared. I haven't taken the time to think about what I believe about something or like what I would say about it. And I think part of that has come from like, who, who cares what I have to say about it? I mean, I think I joked with you, like, I, I just, I'm so honored that you would read my blog because I'm pretty sure my readership is like you and my mom and like maybe three other people. <laughs> well, um, it, went up, it went up one this week when you told me about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Say hi to, I guess say I hi to mom for me. Say hi to mom. <laughs> I can. Um, but uh, all that to say, I just don't think that that's a unique feeling. I think there's a lot of educators who feel that way. So I just want to go back to, I just really appreciate you elevating voices of, of people in the field who might have something to share that could benefit another person. Um, there's one of my favorite quotes by you is that, you know, I hope we don't misquote you. And I'm like really intimidated to say it, but you said, <laughs> Like the smartest person in the room is the room. Is that, that is actually not my quote. Okay. So, <laughs> but I, I share it all the time. It's, I think yeah. it's Dave Weinberger. Yeah. So that's so smart. Um, and, and so you're really expanding the room and I just really appreciate that. So back to happiness. Um, I hope all people in our field um, find the topics that get them really um, excited and jazzed um, and, and, and like energized and this topic of happiness and joy. Uh, I'm finding more and more is that for me. I love just reading about the happiness research and what um, happiness does for the human brain. And so when I talked about how it would be so great to notice um, all those little moments of joy and happiness in the classroom, it, it's actually research-based. And a lot of my, my learning has come from Sean Aker's work um, uh, around um, just so happiness uh, has the power to turn on all of the learning centers of the brain. That's what dopamine can do for us. And yet we don't really talk a lot explicitly about happiness and um, or mirror neurons, right? Like whatever energy I bring into the virtual or in-person space, like that person's probably gonna mirror. So like self-care is a community act. Like I care for myself, I show up in really healthy ways. This person who showed up to the same space is more likely to mirror um, that for me. And there's a statistic that I love that Sean uh, shares that says, Sean Aker said that your brain on positive is 31% more productive than it is at negative, neutral, or stressed. Like 31% is no joke. Like that is a very, you know, if you think about what if I had 
more pay or I had 30 more, 1% more mm -hmm. time. Like it's, it's that significant. Like, and so I just would like to find, it just makes me wonder if that's like a superpower, right? Like that has such potential to grow what kids can do um, and what teachers can do, what we all can do. Why aren't we talking about it more? And so I find myself a little more interested in thinking about what that looks like in schools and classrooms, maybe even next level think about it beyond some of the other more finite, you know, discipline um, content related stuff sometimes. Yeah. And like when you talked about this, I, I thought about, you know, I, I talk a lot about how much I hate the term data driven. People get really upset about that. Like, and to be honest with you, people that get upset about it are people that use the term data driven all the time. And I don't think, I don't think that people that use the term data driven hate children. But when you talked about this, that's what I started thinking about is like, there is so much evidence of really incredible learning that we're relegating to not being important. Uh, when actually it's some of the most important stuff. Like I think about as, you know, as a kid, the, the people that had the most influence in me were my music teachers and uh, were my phys ed teachers and my coaches. They've, they, there's my work, like embodies a lot of the stuff that they're doing today. Like I would actually say that my phys ed coach, Calvin Hobbs, who coached me in football, like legit name is Calvin Hobbs, not even kidding. Uh, he's had more to do with my writing than my English teachers because he's taught me a lot about leadership and that's what I write about. And I'm not saying that my English teachers, my English teachers, I can name, I can, I'm like one of the few people can name every teacher I've ever had in my life. Uh, but they've had, a, they had an influence on me, but they also um, maybe read stuff I had no interest in and still would not be interested in and almost turn me off of reading. I love them as people, but not necessarily didn't like say like, Oh, I'm going to be an author because of this. Right. And I think those, like, that's, when teachers are connecting with their kids, talking to them in the hallway, that's, that's research. It might not be going to a journal, right? It might not be vetted by peer review or anything like that, but there's tons of research there. And I think the same thing to be said when we as administrators take that opportunity to recognize those little moments that, you know, why does a kid want to be in school? Why do they want to connect? And I remember a uh, principal said to me early in my career, he said, a teacher that's good with relationships and uh, bad with curriculum will last a lot longer than one that's the opposite. And it's also the same thing too, is that I think a lot of administrators, if you build on relationships, people will overlook some of the flaws that, of things that you might not know, uh, connect because they know that you care about them and those things can grow. But if you don't build those relationships, nobody cares what you know, right? And I think that's, that's part of it. Uh, one other thing that you said, and I think it's really important is that I try my best to like, people always say like, who's your biggest influence? I'm like, well, I have teachers I connect with all the time. Like I can't point to any single person. And there's like, I hate, like I have no interest in like Twitter followers, Instagram accounts. Like in, I'm not a influencer type guy or anything like that because I know there's teachers with literally zero followers on Twitter who are doing stuff that would blow me away. And some of the best stuff that I've shared are from the teacher that I see that shared with five followers. And I just found it. And I'm like, let's elevate this person like that. I think that's a really powerful thing. And they get excited about that. And it's awesome. But it's just because you don't have like a huge network of followers on social media, like who cares, right? There's people that have huge following on social network. And like, I'm looking for ideas, not who, who follows you. And so I think we got to make sure that we remind us that some of the best educators in the world are not on any social media. And they're doing incredible things. And so we got to find ways to like highlight them. Um, when we can. Th this has been like a really uh, exhausting time for educators, uh, you know, kids too. Uh, I've, I've been reading a lot of stuff talking about, you know, kind of like teachers are, have like a level levels of trauma of, over last year. And not only are they dealing with that, they're dealing with all the trauma that they're, you know, like secondary trauma from their kids. So like, as people are like dealing with COVID and dealing with like teaching in this time, like what what is like one piece of advice that you'd give to educators to like kind of help them and maybe something that's helped you? Uh, back to the happiness research, there is research and I wish I could pull from my head like where I found it, but that suggests that the human brain is more motivated to see how far we have come than how far we have to go. 
And so I just have been trying to take a moment to notice my own progress and whatever I'm working on or, wow, look at how much more I know about this or I can do with this than I could before. Um, even like, you know, our, our educators who are in schools right now, look at um, how scary it was for many of them to open the doors of the school and start school and then look at how much they've accomplished with students um, to this point. You know, whatever, whatever your path has been, um, there is a lot of progress that has been made and that's very motivating regardless of our age or what our role is um, in school. So I just wanted to point that out. And then I'm also trying to um, find opportunities to, to thrill and delight and surprise other people um, and, and, and be creative about it. You know, we have to be really thoughtful about how we interact right now. Um, but because, uh, you know, when you surprise uh, somebody in some way, that's an unexpected joy that you can give to them. The happiness that comes to your brain from that um, is actually uh, exponentially higher than just sort of those expected little happiness moments throughout any given day. That would be true for kids in school too. And so I guess how can we break up the um, patterns of our weeks and our days by, you know, sending that handwritten card or writing that teacher a note in the classroom? Um, you know, whatever it might be, what can we do that it was unexpected, but heartfelt and genuine that makes people feel connected and celebrated for the amazing, you know, things that they uniquely bring to the table every day. Like, as you were talking about this, I got an, I was thinking I got an email um, from someone who said, uh, like, they were like, thank me for this post and uh, they love my book, blah, blah, blah. And they said, you know, I don't expect you to write back, et cetera. And uh, I didn't write back. I phoned them. I just, I they had their number on there. I just called them. And they're like, who is this? I'm like, it's George. And they're like, George, who? I'm like, you just sent me an email two seconds ago. And like, George Gross. And I was like, really cool, right? And so they reach out. They kind of see this like avatar on Twitter, this, you know, email. But like, it's, it's like someone behind this, right? And the reason I uh, think about this like, I really hope that I made that person's day by connecting and thanking them personally. And I think it's kind of cool to make phone calls in a time where we're like so behind screens, et cetera, right? When we can't actually connect in person. But there's also an element, it made me feel really good too. Like, I'm not gonna lie. It was, it almost felt like a little selfish by the end of it. I'm like, yeah, like I was like all excited and <laughs> thinking about that too, right? And I think part of it too is that like I, I think it's great when we elevate others, but I think we elevate ourselves in the process. And I'm not talking about like, Hey, look what I did on Twitter. Like not that kind of thing. I think it's just good for our moods, you know, that we know we can have that impact. Uh, here's like a little personal side question here. So I, I, I think probably the first time I was in Cincinnati, I think I met you. I can't remember. Um, and uh, I don't know what I was thinking, but Cincinnati is like beautiful and I wasn't ready for how beautiful it was. Like, it's a really nice, like, I'm like a big fall guy. Like I love autumn and it's one of the nicest places to be in fall. Like what's the best thing about being in Cincinnati? Gosh, I have so much Cincinnati pride. I'm born and raised here. It's, it's obviously not the Bengals. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. That's, yeah. That's a, that's a tough one. That's a tough topic. Today. <laughs> but they're going to be good. They got Joe Burrow. So that's good. Yeah, there's a little hope there, right? Yeah. Um, I think we have a Midwestern charm here. Um, I think that, uh, you know, people are open to being um, thoughtful about meeting new people and making them feel welcome. And then also like, you know, showing them their thing, things about Cincinnati that are their favorite. They take great pride in that. Um, and it's sort of like one big small town in that way. Um, and so I think I just... I enjoy like the Midwestern charm, you know, like if you, if you compliment me on something I'm wearing, I will be so proud to tell you where I got it and how, <laughs> how, mar how marked down it was. Like I got this thing for $7 and um, that's not true everywhere. And I think I love that about um, Cincinnati and just Ohio and, and the Midwest in general. Well, I think, you know, like it's a really beautiful place and uh, like people, cause like I used to travel, I haven't left my house in like eight months, but I used to travel all the time. Uh, people always say like, what's your favorite place to go to? I'm like, I don't really determine like places by what I see. It's but, but how people treat me when I'm there. And maybe that's one of the reasons, right? Like as, as we're talking about this. So Megan, uh, thanks for taking the time to like chat with us today. If, uh, where can people that are listening to this find you so they can connect with you more? Oh, fun. <laughs> uh, you can find me. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I'm like, uh, cool. 
I hope we interact. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. So it's Megan, M-E-G-H-A-N underscore Lawson, L-A-W-S-O-N. And I would say Twitter is a great place to find me. My, my blog is linked there as well. And I'm always excited to learn from other educators. In that we're going we're gonna to get that readership past the two. <laughs> Kim will be so proud. I'll have to tell my mom. She'll be like, so, you were on a podcast today? That's so great. Yeah. And so Megan's uh, information is in the details below. So just make sure you can see in the description where you can connect with her and uh, reach out to her. I got to share this. I've shared this with you too, but I don't know if we've ever talked about this other than text. Uh, Megan was in her Twitter profile. She was wearing this shirt. And for some reason, one of my, it reminded me of, uh, wake me up before you go go by wham that video i was like oh that looks like one of the shirts that george michael is wearing and so i was like I, I think that was like our first connection i talked to you about how much i liked wham and that shirt reminded me of it and it's okay. still your profile right so it is i, I yes it is i do i love that picture <laughs> because i love the message of that t-shirt that says yeah. you can sit with us but this is an, another lesson that you tell people that they need to make sure they put their actual picture so people can see their face and connect with them um you know like maybe we never would have gotten to become friends if you right. didn't see that i had on that wham style t-shirt that's right yeah <laughs> it is like people that know me know i'm like george michael's greek too right so there's always that but you know <laughs> i was a tough day when george michael passed away but i i listen to his music i actually uh when i work out i i listen to so much wham when i work out it's it's a little bit embarrassing but it's kind of my jam. So I do. Really? And it's not like it's, it's W H A M exclamation mark. It's not just get yeah, that's there. So anyways, uh, it's always great <laughs> talking to you. Uh, make sure you connect with Megan. She is absolutely wonderful reader blog. It's it, I love it. It's uh, it's linked uh, in, in the comments below. And, and I know you'll, if you subscribe to it, uh, she's got great stuff. It's really heartfelt. And I think it makes a really great personal connection. So thanks for listening. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Thank you.